Hey guys, I'm Jason Peacock, and I'm here today to talk about Scythe. Automata, which is specifically just the solo version of Scythe. Let's get started. Scythe is a game with an alternate 1920s backdrop, where our heroes, leaders of farmers and warring mechs, explore new land, leading their people into prosperity. Word has spread that the remote city-state known as the Factory have abandoned their lands. Control of this now deserted land can lead to a superior military position in Europa. Normally, each player starts out in their own little remote piece of land, but I'm focusing on the solo player experience, the Automata, otherwise known as the Factory, have learned that the humans are seeking out their homeland and have begun to return, and they're angry. They have warped technology. They are not interested in buildings or farming, only conquering in war. The player sets up his player mat and faction board of their choice and gives the automata a faction board. No player board is required. For the first game, it's recommended that you pick a faction with a home base far away from yourself. The automata popularity starts at 10 and stays at 10, gets 5 starting coins. Automata starting power and combat card is whatever is listed on the faction mat. The difficulty of the Automata is determined by one of these four Star Tracker cards. The rulebook highly recommends starting with the easy setting, the Automata. I would have to agree with that. I highly recommend that as well. I think it's important to get a feel for how the AI works. Now the heart of this solo version of Scythe is this deck of cards, the Automata deck. One of these is drawn every turn and the icons starting at the top row determine what the Automata will do. There is this green side. The actions on this half of the card are used until the cube on the star tracker hits this full st star icon with a 2 stamped on it. Once this gets to here, the deck is shuffled and the automata starts using the red side. The red side is much more aggressive and combat orientated. The first row here is the movement line. The automata will do whichever move it's eligible, starting with the top left. If the top left action is possible, then that is the only action it takes, and the rest of the icons are ignored. Movement is the tricky part of controlling the automata. It takes a full trial run game to really start to get it down fluidly, but after that it flows quick, and then once you see how the game thinks in terms of positioning, they always warp adjacent to one of their own units and gravitate towards the factory. If you let them, their mechs start to form a front line across the factory and then start attacking farms and other mechs. The next line is the Get Stuff line. Simply give the automata whatever icons are listed in the row. If it's in brackets, it means that if a faction symbol matches the automata's faction, they get that as a bonus. If the brackets are on the Move row, it means that if the faction matches, then that would be the first possible move. An example of this could be that if the black faction was being controlled, then they would do a move to attack. Otherwise, if it was controlled by another faction, then it would be a non-aggressive move. The third line is a bonus for the human player. If they happen to have that ongoing recruit bonus uncovered, then they would get the benefit listed on the card. Now in the center of the card, if there is a star, then the tracker moves along on the star tracker. This is the game's timer. The automata will get one of its six stars on the board each time a full star icon gets passed. The automata can also get stars by having its power hit the end of the track and by winning combats. I'll get to that in a second. These icons on the star tracker keep the automata contained on its starting region until moving past. Then the automata has river walk and freely moves across any river or on any lake. The player definitely has to have been efficient about getting his engine rolling by the time the automata starts crossing water and gravitating towards its factory. Now combat works just as simply as a player versus player game. On the side of these automata cards is the combat chart. Depending on where the automata's power is dictates how much it will spend. You always draw a face down card for combat and do not use the one that determined its turn. The card's icon show next is how many random combat cards the automata will spend. Keep in mind that the automata is constantly getting new cards and power from the get stuff line. The icons right of the card icons show you how many resources of your choice you get for winning the combat. I usually found myself not wanting to attack unless I had power cards to back it up. 
To win at Scythe, you need to be the richest player the fastest. Being popular amongst your people goes a long way in achieving this. This principle carries over to the solo player experience to move the mechs and farmer into as many different territories as possible over the course of the game. I wouldn't really call them farmers. They essentially spread out and occupy and land for endgame scoring. So endgame scoring works almost the same way as in a player versus player game. The player gets points for their building bonus, territories, stars, and every two resources to a maximum of six per territory. Based on what their popularity is, of course. The auto meta gets four coins per star placed and three coins per territory controlled. They don't own any resources or buildings, so they don't get to score for these. Just like a regular game of Scythe, whoever's got the most moolah is the winner. So what are my final thoughts on the Automata? Well, I don't usually play solo games. I prefer to play with other people. But with my wife out of town with the kids, I thought I'd delve into one. I haven't played Scythe PvP enough to give it a solid review, but I'll like the game enough to try the solo version. I think the Automata car deck is brilliantly designed, and because of the randomness of the deck, every game will play out differently, so the player can't necessarily do the exact same moves every time. Assuming that the player uses the same faction player board combo, and the Automata uses the same faction, the order the Automata moves will affect the player's decisions. The solo game difficulty scales from easy to impossible, and it gives you a better understanding into the nuances of the game, and making you a better player. It's a thumbs up for me, it gave me my gaming fix while being home alone. It also spawned my interest to try other solo games. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, then please leave that like love at the bottom and leave your comments down below. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.